Many are called, but few are chosen. How do we make sure we are amongst the ones who are chosen and not, on the other hand, thrown out of the banquet? Perhaps don't do what I did last week while up at the farm. Have you ever found yourself chasing emus around? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but if a YouTuber was on my farm last week, they would probably have captured some hilarious footage of your assistant priest chasing emus around that were attempting to eat all of my mulberries. What was worse, they even started to eat the peaches that are still only the size of a 10 cent piece. To save my fruit, I was frantically installing frames and netting. But perhaps the worst of it happened on my final day of leave. I was dressed for mass and had just blessed myself when an emu casually walked past the window and looked in at me. I was off, dressed in my Alban stole, hoping to convince this emu and his mate to go away and eat somewhere else. Eventually I took stock of myself and remembered I was supposed to be celebrating Mass. I returned somewhat dismayed to recommence the Mass. Interestingly, brothers and sisters, when I'd finished the Mass and went outside, expecting to see two emus chomping away on something in my orchard, as they'd been doing for the previous few days, they were instead nowhere to be found. You may very well ask, where was my focus on the only thing that really matters at the end? Many are called, but few are chosen. In preparing the homily for today's readings, it was clear that I'd fallen into the same trap of the Jews that Jesus is referring to in today's Gospel. How easy is it for us all to become too busy with work or business-related activities, bringing the children to sports, socialising and visiting friends and relatives, doing housework and gardening. While Jesus in today's Gospel was speaking to the former people of God, the Jews, he could have just as well been speaking to us here 2,000 years later, to Catholic Christians, the new people of God, who, just like the Jews, find it so easy to lose our way. Every Sunday, brothers and sisters, we are invited to the most solemn of banquets, the wedding feast of the Lamb, as the book of Revelation describes it, the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, where the sacrifice of Christ on the cross is made present for us so that we can share in the heavenly banquet of the bread of angels. So I say to you today, thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for you heard the invitation and you came. Many haven't come, though, thinking that there isn't time or there are better things to do. But let us not judge them, lest we attempt to do the same and fall into the same trap. Brothers and sisters, for those who take that path and leave their seats empty, the Lord will go out into the streets to invite replacements for us, as he did for the Jews of his time. Even today, there are just as many outsiders, potential new people of God, who do not know God, who can easily fill our seats. Jesus continues to invite newcomers to the banquet, especially especially when there are vacant seats, because we are too busy with our own lives. On the other hand, dear brothers and sisters, Let us not become complacent, thinking that just because we are here, that we are saved. Remember, after that sudden twist in the story, Jesus' final words, for many are called, but few are chosen. Those inappropriately dressed were thrown out into the dark, where there is weeping and grinding of teeth. And so what should we make of this inappropriate dress? Looking to the church fathers, we can see what it means to be inappropriately dressed. For Pope Gregory, the appropriate wedding garment for us to wear is a life of charity. On the other hand, St. Augustine said, the inappropriately dressed sought their own honour and not that of the bridegroom. For St. Hilary, the wedding garment is the grace of the Holy Spirit, 
and the purity of our heavenly temp- of that heavenly temper which taken up on the confession of a good inquiry is to be preserved pure and unspotted for the company of the kingdom of heaven and again on the other hand for origin the one lacking the garment was the one who though present was found to have not put off their old behavior that is they were still living in sin so dear brothers and sisters let us examine our lives and see that we are following the precepts of Christ and his church that we are living charitable pure and spirit led lives that we seek God's glory and not our own and that we are free of mortal sin which ultimately cuts us off from salvation at the end of the day salvation requires a desire for salvation a recognition and repentance of our sinfulness and the seeking of forgiveness for many are called but few take the necessary steps to ensure that they are chosen so brothers and sisters i say to you as i say to myself continue to make time for god in your life put god first above all other things desire what he's offering us repent of our sin and then one day on that great and glorious day we will share in the eternal banquet of the lamb in heaven that god the father is preparing for those who love him